In this video, we're gonna show you the best and most efficient way to grow your quads and your even bigger best responding muscle, of course, the calves. According to two crazy new studies that came out this month that are going to change everything you ever knew about leg training. Let's begin. So what's up guys, welcome to your fitness pal quads. Some people think that the best way to develop clinically meaningful thigh volume is to do squats. That's the best exercise. That alone can develop our hamstring quads and even glutes the best. But is it true? And what did the two new studies that just came out tell us about the topic? So, according to the anatomy in our legs, we have many muscles. If I do a squat, I'm doing a hip extension, meaning I work on my glutes, hamstrings, and adductors. I also have a knee extension, so I'm working on my quadriceps. And a little bit of a plantar flexion for dessert, so I'm also working on my calves. So, it seems like squats develop the entire thigh area. Right? Let's check. A brief review on the effect of the squat exercise on lower limb muscle hypertrophy was published. It checked how much squats alone can build the entire leg. And can we only lean on the squat exercise in order to build muscle for the rest of our lives? Let's check. There was a very, very interesting study. There were two groups. One group did a full squat, ass to grass, and the second group did partial squats with a partial range of motion. After 10 weeks, they wanted to see if there is a difference. Results. So yes and no. Both the full range of motion and the partial rep squats built the hamstring muscle by about 0%. Also in this study, after two months of doing squats, the hamstring muscles grew by 0%. And there was another study and there was another one that showed that the hamstrings didn't grow. And if they did grow, it was negligible. Meaning that squat is not the best exercise in order to develop your hamstrings. Now, next in line, the anterior thigh. Here we have four muscles. According to this study, the biggest among them is the vastus lateralis, next the vastus medialis, after that the vastus intermedius, and last but not least, the rectus femoris. But there's a problem. The last muscle I mentioned, the rectus femoris, also, according to a lot of studies, doesn't grow much from squats. And the studies that show that it does grow show negligible and inferior difference compared to other muscles in the area. So how can we develop this rectus femoris muscle? We also see that the calves, the triceps surae musculature, don't grow much from squats. Although today there is lack of studies regarding the effect of squat on this muscle group, therefore it's very hard to draw strong conclusions. But squat for the calves is probably not optimal. So how can we best develop our hamstrings, glutes, rectus femoris and calves? Let's see. We know that according to recent studies, working on a muscle in its stretched position, meaning when it's lengthened, or even doing partial reps in the stretched position can optimally build the muscle. For example, long lengthened partials in the leg press machine, as you can see now, increase the size of the calves more than a full range of motion. The second study was on the quadriceps. Long lengthened partials doing knee extensions, as you can see now, increase the vastus lateralis and the rectus femoris overall on average more than a full range of motion. The third one isn't an official study yet, but it was presented in a conference. It was done on the glutes and we're going to expand on this study when it will get published in the future, but that's it three studies. Now, a week ago, a new study came to light in which the participants were leaning back in this exercise, meaning they stretch the rectus femoris muscle more because it crosses the hip. And that was opposed to the other leg that worked normally. This type of study is considered to be very good because it's a within subject design, which means each limb is a condition by itself. And because the two limbs are connected to the same body at the end of the day, we at least hope that's the case. That means that sleep, nutrition and genetics are no longer confounders. Results. The leg that trained while the participant was leaning back had a 170% more growth compared to the other leg and that was on the upper aspect of the muscle. When they checked the more distal aspect of the muscle, the rectus femoris grew by 50% compared to the other leg. Therefore, an isolation exercise like knee extensions, especially if the muscle is in its lengthened position, as you can do in the exercise reverse Nordic hamstring, for example, can build the rectus femoris in addition to the squat exercise. Squat! And the squat can be an additional exercise that builds the rest of the anterior thigh. Another thing. In the past, we thought that reaching failure builds more muscle than stopping a few reps shy. We also thought that the graph looks like that and everything is exponential. Exponential? 
special but that's not true and we explained exactly why in this video but today we know that even if you are a trained individual that trains even eight years or if you started yesterday and you're brand new from the factory if you reach failure or you stop one to two reps shy you can build the same muscle on average so here enters a new study that came to light actually a week ago and it goes as follows one of the participants slag did this exercise calf raises in the smith machine until they reached failure but not just any failure in studies there are different types of failures one is volitional failure that the participants do the exercise until he personally decides that he can no longer continue and there is also momentary failure in which the researcher is supervising the participant and making sure that he can no longer perform another rep and it doesn't stop the exercise until the researcher approves that specific type the momentary failure was in the study when they couldn't perform another rep they stopped their other leg did exactly the same but after failure they continue doing lengthened partials exactly as you see now on the screen after 10 weeks the medial gastrocnemius the muscle that you see now on the screen experienced a 43 percent greater relative muscle growth in the leg that performed the lengthened partials after they've reached failure versus the leg that trained only till failure which is crazy now one can say that wait the leg that continued beyond failure did more reps and because it was beyond failure we worked on the muscle even more and this is why it grew more not because of the stretch and it's a decent argument but if reaching failure or stopping a few reps shy builds the same amount of muscle on average and if we're stopping a few reps shy we work overall less we already have enough evidence to rule out the option that it's the more volume slash the failure so if you want to do exercises like they did in the study which is reaching failure and then lengthen partials you can do for example a pull up and after you reach failure you can continue doing partial reps because now the muscle is in its stretch position or bicep curls till you reach failure and then continue doing partial reps because again now the muscle is in its stretch position there are some exercises that we don't recommend applying this technique like squats for example because if you reach failure you go down but you don't go up as for the glutes the squats can be a great exercise but according to research it's probably better doing full squats than half range of motions if we want to maximize our glutes development don't forget to like this video subscribe click the notification bell share this video with a friend who has a rectus femoris write down here in the comments what video you would like to see next and we will see you in the next one that will even be crazier than this one bye bye